Well, I would like to say welcome to JOY. I'm here to introduce the JOY Lives Here session. This is the first of three teams. They're gonna be sharing their work and how they got through their work um, with, uh, with all of you today. So we're gonna jump into conversation with this team and you'll meet them in a moment. But first, let's watch. We have two videos to share. The first one gives an overview of this team, what they've built, the work they've done. And then we have just a short clip from the music video that they produced. So if we could cue the video, let's do that. Joy is a state of being, it transcends emotions. It's a resource that one can choose to tap into at any point in time, whatever their circumstance is. Joy is always there. Joy is always readily available. You just have to look for it. You just have to know where to find it. We're experiencing really hard times in the whole world, in any situation joy can be found and finding that joy might give you the strength to keep fighting and to find uh, solutions to other parts of of your life the joy lives here project is about joy identity and exchange and how it is integral for learning and it also is a byproduct of learning. As we got into the research and started to you know, dig through the literature, it became very clear that there's a strong uh, kind of two-way connection between joy and learning. That when we're joyful, we're, we're, we're better able to learn and that when we're doing the best and deepest kind of learning, it brings us joy. Experiments have shown that different aspects of joy can foster attention, concentration, can improve memory, can improve executive functions, which are a set of cognitive capabilities, and all those capabilities are important for learning. I think it took our group a while to just kind of center on and agree on what the final product was going to be. Well, things kind of really got into gear while we were in Zurich. I believe that in-person collaboration kind of sped things along. We came back from that trip and we knew what we were doing, we knew how we were going to do it, and we each kind of got into our roles. For Joy Lives Here, we really wanted to do a, a social awareness campaign that operated on multiple levels. And so at the broadest level, we were creating a music video. The idea is to have something that is really catchy and accessible and kind of introduces the idea in a very fun and engaging and compelling way that's open and accessible to just about everyone. We know that children love nursery rhymes. We know that children love to learn through song. And song and music is something that appeals to everyone irrespective of age. So that's how we came up with the idea of a music video. We're doing a song, a music video, and a kit. The Joy Kit is a set of 15 cards that are divided into different themes like creativity, finding joy where you are, locating joy and struggle. Within each of those categories, we have different activities. And so the cards are designed to encourage caregivers and children to experience moments of joy on a, a daily basis. It was very important for us that our project and the product that we created had a global perspective. Our cohort comes from West Africa, Argentina, and the United States. And specifically, we wanted to at least have elements of those cultures represented in what we produced. And for the joy kit, for the cards, we also wanted to create experiences that touched on different cultural understandings of joy. There may be other interpretations and other ways of experiencing joy in different cultures, and we wanted to really try to have some of our activities reflect the diversity of those experiences and understanding as well. Many of us live in societies and cultures where you know, everyday joy is, is not really valued and it's often actively shunted to the side or dismissed. And so what we really hope for is that we kind of have both a slogan and a series of tools and a series of resources that just provide these kinds of regular reminders to everyday 
parents, families, caregivers, child care workers that even in these little day-to-day -day moments, cleaning up a mess, you know, learning to ride a bicycle, cooking a recipe, picking out an outfit for the morning, all of these little day-to-day -day activities carry within them the potential for cultivating joy and cultivating learning. And it's something that we have to be mindful of as the adults about uh, making sure that we're conscious about doing that and intentional about doing that. We do hope that it's experiential and that they realize the connection between joy and learning. That joy opens up these learning processes in your brain. I mean, how wonderful is that? It's like we're built to learn with joy as the fuel. And now the music video. I could sing and dance it for you. Or do I need to click something? I All right, great. I would like to welcome our panel. If our panelists could take the stage. Um, how do I get to the slide? Is there a slide? No? No slide. Okay. Whatever order. Not that chair, Andrea. That one's mine. And we have Elizabeth. Elizabeth is dialing in. Can you hear us, Elizabeth? Elizabeth, are you there? Say hello to the crowd for us and tell us where you're, where you're coming in from. Uh, yeah, it's muted right now. Try again. This is part of the... Okay. Yes? Can you hear us? Hi. Hi everyone, um, I am in Abuja right now. I am really sad I couldn't be there in person, but it's this would have to do, I guess. It's a pleasure to see all of you. It's great Thank to you see for coming. Elizabeth. What time is it there in Nigeria? Is it nighttime? It's 2.37. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. no, no, it's in the afternoon. Okay, great. <laughs> terrific, terrific. Um, I have the pleasure of, you know, you know, being the advisor slash mentor to this amazing group of people, um, which as a leader, get great people and just get out of their way. So I'm going to actually do that for the introductions. They didn't know I'm going to do this. Um, just give us your name and kind of, you know, we all have different glasses, different roles, kind of what you do, short and sweet, just kind of go across the panel if you would. Thank you. I'm Michelle Deneen White. Um, I'm the founder and director of Play Smart Literacy. It's an early literacy and family engagement outreach group in Chicago. We help support families to add playful conversations for learning at home. Hi, I'm Andrea Goldin. I'm a cognitive neuroscience um, based in Argentina in Latin America. Hello, I'm Benjamin Harold. I'm a journalist and writer uh, based here in the States in Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Natasha Tarpley. I'm a children's book author, and I'm based in Chicago. Wonderful. Thank you all for joining us, and Elizabeth for dialing in. Um, you know, this program, the LSX, um, there's, there's the work that's done that you could see in the video, and you're going to learn more about the work in the breakout sessions at 11, where you can sit and engage with the teams and ask questions and share ideas. But there's also the journey that each of us goes on as individuals and as a group to figure out how to work across disciplines, across languages across cultures, across time zones. And I thought maybe kind of as a warm up, if each of you, and we're gonna start with, with Elizabeth, could just share a little bit about something personally you either learned about yourself or a way you've taken this work forward. You know, for example, for me, I would know I need to like slow down and listen to other people because that's not my strength. Um, but if there's a, a snippet like that that either reminded you from this process or you learned, um, maybe we could kind of do a lightning round starting with Elizabeth and um, talk about what that personal insight might have been for you. Okay, um, well, I 
I think the biggest takeaway from this project for me has been that I found my voice in the LSX program. Um, my work was centered around Nigeria and creating uh, digital content, digital educational content for kids in Nigeria and Africa. Um, this was the first time I had gone beyond the African continent and it was a big step for me. I had, um, there was a bit of imposter syndrome, I think at the beginning, but um, as time went on and I collaborated with my teammates, I found my voice. I found that what I do is valid and that validity really gave me a lot of confidence. And I, I see the benefit now of stepping outside your comfort zone of talking to people in other fields and um, it helps you grow, it helps you learn, it helps you be better in what you do. That's wonderful, Elizabeth. I found my voice. That should be on the banner for, yeah. Uh, Natasha, do you want to go next, Natasha? Yeah, I, I think this project helped me to change my own relationship to joy and my own understanding of joy and just kind of developing um, a sort of practice, you know, of kind of cultivating joy um, in my own life in the process of doing this this work in times of struggle, <laughs> you know, and things like that. So um, I think that would be it. Like what we actually did became very meaningful to me in my own life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for me, I think part of what was so wonderful about the experience is that it helped me kind of fall back in love with science and research again. Um, you know, as a journalist, I had gotten really kind of in a rut with covering research all the time, but it was a lot of program and policy evaluation and nothing ever works in education. So it kind of gets depressing for, uh, for a while. <laughs> so to be back in a space, we're talking with people about not so much, you know, kind of the policy side of it, but more the inner workings of the human spirit and mind just really reconnected me to my own excitement and passion for science, joy, and learning. Andrea? Um, well, I agree to everything that has been said <laughs> so far. Um, I think that the, the most important thing is that it, it, it allowed me to think uh, of different ways to integrate science to everyday life. And not only for research, that's what I do, but, but only, well, I, I don't know if I have a few minutes. Uh, I, I have a personal story to tell. Uh, um, it's about I have a six-year-old. And when I put him to bed, now, after, the, after our project, I ask him uh, to think about two or three things that, um, that foster joy to him that day. And I also ask him to think mm -hmm. about a couple of things uh, in which he helped other people to feel joy. And he really enjoys that. And uh, I started to do this after, <laughs> after our project uh, because I realized that in that way, he gets to practice how to find joy in everyday situations, even though he might have had a rough day at school. So I'm super grateful, so thank you. Love that. <laughs> Sorry you have to follow that, Michelle. <laughs> no, tough one. Because I went back to, I feel like the biggest way that I changed was learning um, to communicate differently and our working group, um, I realized that I am an educator, so I think more about um, an approach all the time and an intentional approach versus um, working with people who organize their skills and their passions in different careers that they think so much differently. We have really different mindsets, so um, that you know they may be crafting and, and thinking very deliberately before speaking. So I had to learn to listen, um, really do better deep listening. I'm sure we can all agree I, it's still a, pro a work in progress, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, that, uh, that was something I'm really grateful for, that I, I learned to think about. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that and for each of you. I, I think that kind of leads us into a, 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 I'd like to go a little bit deeper on that conversation, which is as you're thinking about this collaboration across different perspectives and points of view, are there any, you know, any advice, any tips, any insights you have that could help the next cohort that's coming in? So be sure to do something or, you know, be sure to avoid doing something. I mean, you, know, you can pick either one, but just, you know, the, the essence of this LSX way is thinking about how do we get the good out of this type of tension or friction that comes when people with different 
um, ideas and perspectives come together. So what are some like I tip, tips or ideas? And if you have an anecdote, that's fine. If not, and this, you know, feel free to answer or pass. It's not, we don't have to go down the line on each one. But if um, there's somebody, and, and Elizabeth, feel free to just jump in at any moment. Um, what would you share with the group about how to make uh, this collaboration work? I don't, I can jump in if, the, if that's okay. You go, girl. I, um, I really think the, the strongest thing for me that um, really helped spark um, our work was finding out, doing a deep dive into my group and learning about them and their work. So when we first um, started meeting, I think we pretty quickly fell upon this, like, um, common love of the of the topic that we chose, but um, then when we came to an impasse, um, I found it really helpful to like step back and just figure out, learn more about each each of the people in our group. So I really um, you know read through some of their work or looked at what they had created before. Um, so being um, open and uh, and admiring um, and really considering what um, the group has done was super helpful. So I would say being, you know, please be vulnerable and communicate and share um, that that is your biggest aid because um, we're put together with such amazing people and um, if you don't know about it, you can't use that. Did you all have the same understanding? Like, I think you all are like, oh, this is great. The science of joy, connecting joy and learning, love it. Was it like just smooth sailing or was it like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is, remember, we learn through falling down and getting back up, okay? So that's part of the process. There was some smooth sailing. It wasn't all. <laughs> but I would say. What percentage? No, <laughs> joy. <laughs> for, for me personally, I think part of what helped us get through you know, some of the, the difficult periods or the impasses as a work was a kind of a collective willingness to take responsibility, not just for making sure that our own ideas and passions got um, expressed and were part of what we did, but holding space for, for the group as well. Um, and being able to do that in a way of like, okay, we have a collective vision that is more powerful and nuanced and diverse than our individual visions and being able to hold and remember that and doing that in the context of like, oh wait, these are incredibly talented people. And so having a space where the group felt like, okay, I can bring my best self and my best work and my best ideas in and contribute to something larger, like that takes actual work. And I think doing that, being intentional about that and having shared responsibility for that within the group makes a big difference. What did that look like? What did it look like to create that space? Was that, um, you know, a monthly Zoom meeting? Was that a set of guiding principles? Like, was, was there anything that you could help the crowd um, th here think about in terms of creating that space to have that, that open dialogue? Give a, you know, kind of a, a two-part example just from my own perspective and experience. So one, there was a part where we had kind of reached an impasse and I felt like the best way I personally could contribute to the group was shifting into more of a project management role and saying, okay, let's kind of try and get organized and it's less about what I want to bring and more about how we can streamline what we're doing together. And I think that helped us move forward. And then later in the process, um, I went through some personal things and wasn't able to participate as fully and then other people stepped up and took the group and did the same thing, kind of moved it forward for the good of the group um, in that way. So I think having that back and forth. Natasha, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, I, I also really agree with what you said, Michelle, because I think it's so important to, I think as a larger fellowship, we had a moment where we each by sector got to present like a day in our lives of what we were doing, you know, how we did our work. And I think it's really important to do that within the small group as well and to really kind of understand, you know, how people are working and what they're doing and so, that person can feel as though you know their work is being appreciated. That they they can bring that work into um, you know into the group space as well. And I and I you know I think some of that happened once we you know gelled on the on the project. And I was really impressed by you know each person's you know contributions. So I think early on, if if we set if you set a practice of that, you know. Um, going throughout that might help, you know, each person feel valued and um, heard. 
Did you, did any of you, I mean, you're a children's book, very well-known children's book author, we've got research scientists, local, and we've got such impressive people here. Did you feel that you entered the group all kind of as, you know, equals and, and obviously it was more understanding, but was there, was there a little bit of trying to like, like getting to know each other and like understand the, the language each of you uses in your disciplines? Um, would love to hear that. And then I'm gonna toss to Elizabeth because I think the working cross-continental was, was a, a big part. And Andrea, I know you can speak to that too, but um, either question, grab one and go with it. <laughs> uh, I just wanna, who are the, the new fellows? Can you raise your hands? Okay. I just have one message, sorry. Enjoy the process. <laughs> I mean, I, I, she said uh, to some of you uh, last night, uh, don't be afraid to say yes. It's like awesome, and just jump and do it. Uh, and, uh, but, but it's hard, right? You have your whole, you have your family, hard. you have your it's work, not easy. you have your others, right? So, so enjoying it and make space for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow you to enjoy the process. It's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Elizabeth, I know um, uh, uh, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, and that's okay. Um, I think you were among the first cohort to uh, join the program from Africa. And um, what did that, did that pose any particular challenges for you? I loved how you talked about finding your voice and thinking more broadly, but um, what was your experience in terms of lessons learned, in terms of collaboration from your perspective? There were a number of challenges. Um, the first, the biggest one obviously was um, the unstable internet connection. So um, a number of times I couldn't really follow along with meetings. I would have to maybe uh, go through the minutes later or whatever was written later to be able to like digest what was discussed during the meeting. A lot of times I had to leave my camera off and, and they couldn't really, and I couldn't really engage as much. But, um, it, and then there was also the challenge of, I had never worked with scientists before or people like really accomplished people in their fields before. So there was, uh, that hurdle to get over as well, but I am glad I was a part of the process. And um, yeah, I once I got over the initial um, challenges, I was like, okay, I, like Andrea said, I allowed myself to enjoy the process. I allowed myself to like step outside my comfort zone, and I have learned a lot. So, yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about joy itself. I want to note that this team chose the science of joy well before joy became a popular theme in particularly this country, well before, um, you know, Pixar's uh, Inside Out 2 became the highest grossing animated film of all time this summer. These guys were ahead of the game on joy. <laughs> I want to acknowledge that, so you guys are great prognosticators. Um, but, you know, thinking about the future, thinking about what excites you, about the work you did or about the lessons you've learned or the relationships you've formed, if you could each weigh in on, you know, looking forward, what brings you joy, what gets you excited? And anyone can start. I think Michelle's gonna start. <laughs> okay. I was trying to wait and be patient. Uh, fine. <laughs> uh, I am most excited about seeing um, our creation and um, seeing how it changes and then finding it uh, in other parts of the world and in other studies. Um, I'd be uh, amazed and just thrilled to see that happen in an intentional way and even unintentional ways. I. Um, I read kind of recently ideas from the book Rick Rubin's um, The Creative Way, and the idea that, um, well, the creator is different when you create something and even the next day. So we're changing and, and the idea will change. Um, and, and also the idea that um, ideas have time that it, you're a time comes for your idea. And it shows up in the universe in lots of ways. So I, I'm really excited about what you're saying. I believe too that this is a bigger idea that we have just grasped onto and it's time has come. And so I'm really excited to see um, you know, how that plays out. 
whoever wants to go next. I'll just jump in quickly and say part of what I, you know, would definitely carry away from this um, experience and particularly the dynamics within our group was, again, this idea of joy is kind of an orientation and a practice and not something to be found elsewhere, but something to be kind of found within and then brought out and shared. And I think being part of a group like this, and especially an international group, really helped that helped me kind of uh, absorb that in a new way, um, particularly understanding that like the instability and the uncertainty and all of the tensions and problems we feel politically and socially here in the United States, like they're happening all over the world and we're all dealing with this in different ways and having the chance to get to know other people who were trying to navigate that same set of tensions um, in a way that is joyful um, helped me learn how to do it myself too, so I appreciate it. Yeah, and before, and before we go to the others, I mean, keep in mind, if you ask most kids about learning and going to school, if you do a word cloud, joy probably doesn't pop up, right? Or like, what's school like, right? So while it feels very natural to see the joy in those everyday moments of parent-child connection, of kids figuring things out, of teaching them to read, you know, there's a real challenge here in how do we make learning in preschool, in early elementary and beyond and finding that joy, um, especially post pandemic as we're all back in rooms together. So I applaud this group for its vision and its energy and enthusiasm. But as I look at the next cohort, there's more work to be done. So um, would love to hear too about, uh, get everybody else's uh, perspectives on the future and what they're excited about. But keep that in mind that this work is great and you've made it tangible. There's cards, there's a video, there's a tagline, um, but there's more to be done. So let's talk a little bit more too about, Natasha, in terms of your work or your life. Like, like where does this go? It could be your personal relationships you made. Like what goes, onward after this, as you graduate <laughs> from the program and become an emeritus? I think a couple things. So one of the things that was really exciting to me about this project was the ability to kind of, in my work, I'm, you know, I write mostly books, but I'm also interested in expanding into other arenas. So it was an opportunity to sort of manifest something in a different way. So there's something that's tangible, um, that still um, was a way for me to use my skills in collaboration with others. So that was very exciting and it helps me to think about, you know, potentially going forward and doing more of those kinds of collaborations. And I also think just like Ben was saying, that that intentionality is so important, you know, and to be able to, as individuals, to recognize that and to acknowledge it, you know, I was at a, school visit yesterday in, in Silver Spring and it was just, you know, it, there wasn't anything, you know, spectacular as far as, you know, a unicorn didn't appear like <laughs> in the middle of the room, but it actually kind of a unicorn did appear because the kids and I were talking, we were listening to each other, we were engaging. And so that kind of practice going forward, um, it's not always, um, easy, but just to kind of think about that and, and bring that forward uh, everyday interactions, as you were saying as well. Yeah, I'm hearing as you guys talk about how you work together, like understanding, understanding each other, where you're coming from, learning. I'm also hearing some confidence in, you know, that's fine. I, I can work with scientists and I can work with authors and um, and I have something to add. So that, that's, that's a wonderful um, thing to carry forward. Elizabeth, I'm going to toss to you to hear kind of in the looking forward, what, uh, what excites you about this going forward and your experience? Um. I will be more intentional about seeking joy wherever I am in whatever situation I found my, find myself. And um, I will, it will also definitely impact my work. Um, we, we worked on the music video. The song was an original song. It was, uh, the lyrics are original. The, it was mixed and mastered by somebody I know. So being able to create something like that, something tangible that brings people joy um, that is going to be infused into my life and into my work going forward. So it's, um, I, I look forward to helping people find joy in their day to day, in, in, in their lives, in their work, in whatever situation they find themselves. 
That's wonderful. And I know the video is just literally hot off the press. So hopefully this team in the room and the much bigger team online can help share that when we get it to you and amplify that in your social channels. Andrea, you get the last word on the panel um, because you're the smarty pants and we are all the smarty pants. <laughs> But you represent the PA, you know, the, the no, actually, I say that with love. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know that at some point at the beginning of, of our fellowship uh, process, uh, they, some of them, at some point, they, they, they said things like that. And I think it's wonderful to get to know each other and to understand that uh, I might know some things on some themes, but I have no idea about <laughs> many other things. And so we all learned uh, a lot uh, along the process. Um, just one, one tiny thing regarding, uh, I think, your previous question, but it relates to this. Um, the word joy was not easy to find, and it was not easy, not easy to define. And I did a lot of uh, uh, literature research, and I discussed a lot. There is not, not a good translation in Spanish, for instance. And usually people think about, OK, it's happiness. And if you look up the dictionaries, they say it's happiness. But it's not happiness. It's different. You can feel joy in unhappy times. So uh, it was super interesting to try to uh, translate the word into Spanish, into, which is disfrute, by the way. That's, we all agree on that, uh, in, in Argentina, at least. Um, yeah. Disfrute, which is not the same as disfrutar. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not that easy. But it was a real challenge, and, uh, and I also love that process to find the exact words, and that words are not exactly the same everywhere, and translation, and don't trust dictionaries. Yes. Well, we look forward to talking with you guys more about the project at the World Cafe. Elizabeth, I think we're not Zooming you in for that. Thank you, though, for being part of this. And the work continues. And we're all going to be dancing to the music video. And time for our next panel. Thank you.